uh, those who join us from MGBC today, good afternoon. Uh, on this on this day, which is um, was it nineteenth, nineteenth of February? Is it right? Eighteenth of February. Okay, sorry. Usually I'm a day out. Okay. Um, so let's read today's scripture. Today's scripture is from Romans chapter five, verses one to five. Romans chapter five, verses one to five. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not... Disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. Amen. How is your year going so far? Can I ask you, how about your year, 2018? Is it going well? Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Have you, have you received more joy this year? Amen. And more grace, more of his gifts? Amen. Amen. Amen, right. Um, last month was January, and January the 31st, did you hear about there was a, a lunar eclipse, right? Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure you heard that there was three special events, um, cosmic, cosmic events, okay? And we, they call it the super blue blood moon, okay? It's super moon is, as you know, super moon is where the moon becomes closest to the Earth. You know, as you know, the, the, the moon is, is not round, is the, the path that the moon goes, for example, okay, if this is the moon and this is the Earth, the path that the moon goes around the Earth is not circular, right? It's ecliptical, okay? So sometimes it's close to the Earth, sometimes it's farther away from the Earth. And uh, last month was super moon, super moon? It was really bright and really close, if you saw it, on the 31st. And also, it looked eclipsed, okay? It also, there was an eclipse, and um, the moon came between the sun and the earth, and it was eclipsed. And then there was another, there was another, another phenomenon. It was a blood, blood, ah, sorry, blue moon. It was a blue moon. So, it, the blue moon is, as you know, the blue moon is when the full moon comes w twice in one month. And the blood moon is where it's an eclipse, and the shadow of the earth goes over the moon. But the only light that comes through is the sunlight that mixes with yellow and becomes red. Orange and yellow become red. Right? So we have three events. It's really significant, I think it's significant. Super, super moon, blood moon, and blue moon is significant. God is doing something this year, I believe. Okay? Some, some of you don't believe, but I think God is doing something for really wonderful this year. Amen. And he put a sign in, in the sky. And he's, God is saying to us, Hey, I'm doing something this year, 2018. I'm going to pour out my spirit and I'm going to do something really great. Are you listening? Are you looking? Oh, uh, I didn't notice. I didn't see anything. Ah, but God is doing something amazing, right? Okay, what, hap <laughs> what happened in January? What happened? Okay, in January, nothing special? Maybe, well, okay, Donald Trump, he, he had his, what is it, the, the State of the Union address. That was in January, right? That was something significant. What else happened? Um, North and South. Korea. North and South. Okay, yeah. So what happened was, um, was it yes. Kim Jong Un? He kind of, he kind of, I don't know if he really changed his mind or it's just politics, but he decided, okay, we're going to join the Olympics, right? And there was a big political rush to get everything prepared, right? And so, so something's happening. Something's happening this year, I'm sure. God is doing something, okay? 
um, the conservative, if you're a Christian, if you're conservative in your thinking, you'll be happy because um, these days, or last, Chris, last Christmas, we had a president, or we didn't have, but the American people had a president who said, Christmas is here, we're going to celebrate Jesus Christ. We had a president of the United States who said Christmas, okay? And he didn't say, we're not, he didn't say, for example, the previous president, he said, we're not going to have the word Christ in Christmas anymore in the White House. And we're not going to use the word Christ because we're living in a political, political correct world. But Trump says, no, we don't live in a political correct world anymore. <laughs> we live in a world where we can say what we believe. And we believe that Christ died for the sins of the world. And he is here with us. And he lives in our heart. Amen? Okay? Uh, Donald Trump didn't say that. I said that. But he's, <laughs> he said half of it. He said, we're going to have Christmas in the White House. And Jesus Christ is back in the White House. Amen? Amen. And he's the, he's the first American president who inv inv invites Christian pastors to pray with him. Lay hands on him and pray. Okay? And he's the first... <laughs> president who has a Bible study in the White House. He has a Bible study every week. I mean, he doesn't co go to the Bible study, but his cabinet have a Bible study. Cabinet are those people who are, you know, as you know. But if you're Korean, maybe you don't know cabinet. Cabinet means the, the fellow ministers. So we're living in exciting times. Amen? Amen? Okay, I know some of you, some of you don't like Donald Trump, but anyway... Um, <laughs> Okay, but anyway, it's good news um, because, you know, the liberal forces that were swarming, okay, the liberal forces were swarming around the world and taking, right, you know, as you know, for example, you know, two years ago, there was a, a new rule made in America, you know, that if you want to be transgender, you don't have to go to a doctor, and the doctor doesn't have to examine you and say you're transgender. You can, if you just decide in your mind, I'm transgender, or but President Obama said, okay, if you decide that you're transgender, you can go into any toilet. If you're a man, you can go into a woman's toilet. If you're a woman, you can go into a man's toilet. So Obama changed the law by his signature and said any man can be a woman, any, ma any woman can be a man. And that caused a great big shock in America. And in America and in my country, transgender children or children who who have um, what they call um, uh, gender gender dysophia or something they call it gender you know when you're confused about your gender these days you have to be careful these days the medical profession has been overtaken by liberal forces and they say if children say to you if children um, have some confusion about their gender. If, the, if your child says to you, oh, I wish I, I wish I was a girl, not a boy, then take them to a doctor. The doctor can prescribe hormone blocking medical treatment. Hormone blocking, right? And then later on, you can come back when they reach puberty and they can, be, you, they can receive puberty blocking medical treatment, which means they don't change into sexual, you know, for, well, if they're a girl, they don't have, es, 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 they don't have the, the, the yeah, they, anyway, if you're a girl, they block the estrogen, you know, the estrogen. Yeah. If you're a boy, they block the other drug. Testosterone. Yeah, okay, testosterone. If you're a boy, they block the testosterone. If you're a girl, they block the est estrogen. estrogen. Okay, so nowadays in the medical profession has been taken over right by the liberal forces they say okay if your boy wants to be a girl that's okay celebrate with them and encourage them and say okay it's your decision and so in america in california there used to be one clinic in america a, a clinic which helped um, gender dysophia but now there's suddenly there's there's 30 of them 30 clinics exploded across California. Why? Because the liberal forces are in charge in California. But if you're conservative, if you're a Christian, what happens if your child says, I want to be a girl? If, you're, if, you're, if you have a boy and they say, 
one day, I want to be a girl. Well, traditionally, the parent, if they're conservative or even if they're, lib even if they're liberal minded, they would have said, okay, you'll grow out of it. Okay? So if you're a child, okay, most of you remember when you were children, sometimes you, you wanted to act like a girl. Maybe. Maybe you did. But you grew out of it, right? It's, it's, it's part of the course of growing up. Amen? We all go through times when we want to be another role, okay? As we're growing up. When we play, Batman plays in Batwoman, Batwoman plays like Batman, okay? But this is just, ch we, we grow out of it. But nowadays there's a big problem with tran transgender. And in America, in my country, it, the transgender has exploded. But the good news is that we are living now with a, 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 conservative, a conservative president in America. And in my country, not so much, not conservative. Well, he, she is conservative, but she's a new conservative, which means she, she, she calls herself a Christian, but she's actually a... She supports gay marriage. She supports... She supports liberalism okay these days if you say anything on the internet if you say anything on the internet or if you twitter if you use twitter and you say something about against gays if you say the bible says that gays is wrong you can be arrested in my country you can be arrested by the police and i was looking at my i was looking at my telephone and there was a twitter there was a twit there was a twit message from the my local Police force, not, not actually in Sussex where I come from, but the next force, sorry. They said, if you make any, if you speak about any, any group like transgenderism, you, you will be put on notice by the police. And they, th my police, my British priests, they threatened the whole of my country, people. And they said, if you speak about any people group, you will be arrested or you will, they said, you'll be put on notice that the police will be knocking on your door, right? In America too, in America, if you're a preacher, if you say, if you say like this, the book of Deuteronomy the, says that gay marriage is not biblical and it's against God's law. If you do that, you'll be arrested by the local police. They'll arrest you and they'll put you in prison. So, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful to push back the forces of liberalism today. <coughs> Amen? Amen. This is a really significant time. The 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 the, um, the Bible says when the I can't remember I can't remember the words. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises a standard. Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises a Standard, right. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises a standard. We are the standard. Amen? Amen. Joy believes it. <laughs> Joy's um, concentrating, okay? Joy's a strong Christian, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you, Joy. Your name is really Joy. Okay. So that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises... He's standing, which is you and I. Amen? Amen. And today, okay, today we're living in significant times, right, where God has raised up a standard, okay? And um, God is doing something new in this, and we have to pray, amen? And we have to pray against the enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises a standard. We are the Christian standard for today. And <clears throat> today's word is really wonderful because now we're starting a new year. It says in verse 5, and hope does not disappoint us. Okay, this, in this verse it says, put us to shame. But I, I love the NIV version better. It says, and love and hope does not disappoint us. Okay, I'll read that to you. Romans chapter, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Five, it says, And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Amen? Amen. Whatever you're going through, okay, hope does not disappoint you, because God's love is being poured out into your hearts 
Okay, God's love is being poured out into your hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. Amen. So put your faith in God's love this year. Okay. What are you thinking about in your mind these days? I'm thinking about one thing: God's love. Okay, I'm thinking about God's love, because God, God, God is speaking to me. Put your faith in me. Then. When I said to him, "What do I put my faith in you?" He said, "Put your faith in my love." Amen. Put your faith in His love. These three remain: faith, hope, love. But the love is the greatest. If you have faith in God, right? If you have if you have faith in faith, okay, God will use you. If you have if you have faith in 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 God's faith, God will use you. If you have faith in His hope, God will use you. If you have faith in His love, God will really use you. Because love touches people's hearts.、Amen. Love is what touches people's hearts. When we talk to people about Jesus, and and for example, last week I had a di- a, a discussion with somebody.、Um, somebody, I had a discussion with somebody online, and、um, I I said to him, "What do you think about、um, God?" Logos and Rema, you know, in the Bible it's, it talks about Logos and Rema. What do you think about? Do you believe in Rema? Do you believe that the Rema, the Word of God, is as in Rema? Christians can receive every day and receive a revelation or a Rema, a living word for them in their hearts. And this man, he 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 wrote back to me and said, "I don't believe that there's any new revelation from God for Christians." It it finished. In the it finished in the book of Acts. When the book of Acts closed, it finished. There's no new revelation. So I read it. I read what he said, and then I I wrote back and I said, "Excuse me, but you're saying there's no more revelation. But so what you're saying is Paul's teaching. Paul's teaching in the book of First Corinthians twelve to fourteen. Paul's che- teaching on the church. What is Paul's teaching on the church in First Corinthians twelve? Twelve. To fourteen, where it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If we go, if we if we go to verse, if we go to chapter First Corinthians chapter fourteen. First Corinthians chapter fourteen. It says, verse one: Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gifts of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue doesn't speak to men but to God. And then it says in verse six,、uh, sorry, not verse six. It says, it says、uh, in verse in chapter twelve. Look at chapter twelve. It says chap- chapter twelve, verse four. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one, as Just as he determined, Paul's teaching is on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He's teaching that everyone has a gift of the Holy Spirit, and that God has given everyone a gift as He determines in the body of Christ, and we're to use that gift, and we're to seek, we can, we're to seek the greater gifts. Paul says,、um, eagerly desire the greater gifts. Okay, but anyway, God has a gift, at least one gift for each one of us that we must ask Him, what is that gift, and exercise, try and exercise that gift. Paul says, whenever you come together, one of you has a a psalm, a song, a spiritual hymn. Where is that verse? Whenever you come together, one of you has a psalm, one of you has a hymn, one of you has a blah blah blah. Where, where is that verse?
Aha, here. Verse 26. Can you find that? Chapter 14, verse 26. Chapter 14, verse 26. It says, What then shall we say, brothers? Let's read together. What then, then shall, shall we say, say brothers? brothers? When, when you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or interpretation. All these must be done for the strengthening of the church. Okay, can you see that? Paul's teaching the first century church, in the first century, Paul is teaching them, whenever you come together, one of you has a hymn, one of you has a word of instruction, one of you has a revelation, one of you has a tongue, one of you has an interpretation of that tongue. All of, all of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two people or three at the most should speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there's no interpreter, don't even try to speak a tongue, because nobody will understand you. And if a new Christian comes in, they'll say you're crazy. And they'll, they'll say you're a crazy person, they'll leave. But Paul is teaching here about the first century church. But most Christians don't believe in this teaching. They say, no, in the book of Acts, God closed any new revelation. So I wrote, I wrote to this man who, who wrote to me, and I, I wrote back to him and said, well, Paul said that we have to exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of the church. And I... I said to him, no wonder the church is so weak. We don't have the dynamite. We don't have the weapons that God preached, that Paul taught us. We don't have the dynamite. We don't have the weapons of war against the spirit. To, and we don't have those. We don't have those. So we don't, we don't, we're not strong anymore. The devil has come in like a flood. And we don't have the weapons to fight him, spiritual weapons, as a church, as a body. But as a Christians, we must seek these gifts that God has given us. Otherwise, we're wasting, we're wasting the ammunition, the arsenal, the weapons of warfare that we have for the strengthening and the building up of the church. Amen? Hello? Hello? We're missing those things. We're missing those things. So if Paul, if Paul taught those things only for the first century church, what about us? So the first century church was strong and we are weak. We have no weapons. That's not God's will. God wants us to be powerful Christians. Amen. Amen. God wants us to be full of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. We can't do this Christian thing without the Spirit of God. We're weak. We're, we're dis demoralized. We're nothing. We're insignificant upon this earth. But with God's Spirit breathing over us, we're powerful in Him. We have living Water and living word, and we have living um, healing for people if we apply it to ourselves first. If we apply God's teaching, we have a tangible spirit of God moving through His church, and God is speaking to us. God is speaking to those who will open their ears and listen. Listen to Him speak to us and move by the power of His Holy Spirit. I think I better close here, right? Huh? Right? Yes? I better close? Or oh, five more minutes? Okay, five minutes is okay, okay. If I ask, if I ask um, Pastor Christian, she says five minutes, I'm, I don't want to ask the Danny Moksanin. Because <laughs> he'll say close. <laughs> um, what else did I feel God wants to well, what else did I feel God is speaking um, God has a message God has a message for you a living message today we don't have to think that God has a message for us 2,000 years ago or the message to the church God has a message for you today he loves you okay I, I wrote to this man I said to him God loves you and he wants to speak to you today he has a living word a rhema for you today Okay, but he didn't respond to me, so I don't know. Okay, but I'm still waiting for his response. But I said to him, God loves you and he wants to give you. And Jesus said, Jesus said, I have many more sheep who are not of this pen. In John chapter 10, I have much, many more sheep I, uh, that are not of this pen. I will go and I will bring those sheep to this pen. And my sheep will listen to my voice. Amen. 
Romans, uh, sorry, John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, and Jesus says, you have the word of God. You have the word of God. You have the Torah. But you've never, list, you've never heard my voice. And you haven't even seen me. You haven't seen me in my form. And you've, you've never heard God's voice. You haven't seen God in the form of, of me, Jesus, right? He, he said that in, in John. John chapter 4, I think. John chapter 4, 4 or 5. It says, you, you've never even heard my voice, but you have God's word. You have the word, the Torah, but you don't even hear my voice. That's, that's like the, the church today. God wants to speak to you today. A living word. If you look in the Bible... If you study, you, you, most of you are students, right, of the Bible. You study Greek. In the Bible it says, it says, well, Jesus said, Jesus said to the devil, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema word that comes from my mouth. Okay, and then also if you look in Ephesians, let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, what does it say? Ephesians chapter 6, it says, verse, can you look at verse 13? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Therefore put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with, it, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. If you look in the Greek, what does that word say? Word. What does it say in the Greek? Okay, you, you, are, you, you're, uh, you are Greek scholars, right? You're Greek students. You're students of Greek. What does it say? Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What does it say in the Greek word? It says Rema. It doesn't say Logos, it says Rema. It says, take the Rema, the living word that, you, that God wants to give you today. Take that word and extinguish, right? And extinguish with the shield of faith, extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, okay? Right, the shield and the sword. Which is the word of God is the, shield, is the sword and the shield is the faith to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Amen? Rema. Okay, the word is Rema. If you look in the Greek. Rema, that's the word. Okay, but most Christians, when they read that, okay, be careful. Most Christians, when they read that, they say this means the Bible, the Logos. No, it doesn't. It means Rema which is different in the Greek, right? When you ask a Christian, what does it mean? It means they say the word of God is God's word. If you look in the Greek, it says rema, which is God's spoken word. This is written word, okay? Originally it was rema, yes. God spoke it to people and it was written down, but it became logos. But rema is God's spoken word today for you, okay? For you, your own personal word. It can be for your own, but it, there's a distinction. Rema is spoken, Logos is written. So, if we want to be really powerful Christians, we must have the Rema as well as the Logos. We must have both, okay? I, I, I love the Bible. We must have the Logos, but we must have the Rema. Otherwise, we're, we're lopsided, lopsided, we're unbalanced children of God. Amen? If you don't have the Rema, ask God to give you the Rema, the living word. Ask him to speak to you. Say, thank you, Jesus, that you are my loving Father and that you love me so much you want to speak to me. Even one word, what, that word could be, I love you, or whatever. But God wants to speak to us, his, his living word today and every day. So we can grow up as Christians. Amen? We can grow up, okay? And not be, not be Christians who are living in only with one Milk, but God wants us to be living with milk and meat together, and we grow up strong. Not Christians who are living off yesterday's blessings, but Christians who are living off every day 
fresh blessings every day. Amen? David, I'm going to finish here. David says, early in the morning, I lay my request before you and I wait to hear your response. Amen? So we must wake up in the morning and lay our request and wait for God to speak to our hearts and give us the living word for today. Because Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth Amen. of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful, wonderful love. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. You want to speak to us new word every day and you want to warm our hearts today. Father, thank you, Lord, that you love us. You want to warm our hearts with your love. Please come and warm your hearts, our hearts, with your love, with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that hope never disappoints us because you have poured out your love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Please pour out your love now as we worship you into our hearts and heal us and strengthen us with your spirit and give us your fresh outpouring of your word and your spirit to make us strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.